Now, when we were discussing about warehouse order creation rule, we had also uh, seen what are the relevant uh, master data and all the relevant uh, configuration. So we went step by step across all the configurations, did our configuration, and then we had also created test data where the warehouse order creation rule was correctly being determined. So in today's session, what we are going to cover is another very interesting topic from the outbound perspective, and that is called cartonization planning. Okay. So cartonization planning is required in cases where you are using a lot of packaging material and you want to ensure that when the packaging materials are being used to ship the products, it is being done in the most optimum manner. Now, when we leave it to human beings, what happens is that sometimes out of carelessness, out of human mistakes, we might be selecting wrong packaging materials to pack a particular product. Okay, so when I say wrong packaging material, that does not mean that a product which should go inside a bottle, we are sending it inside a carton. That is not what I meant. What I meant was now every packaging material or every box or every carton or every container, it has got its own fixed dimensions. Right? So let us quickly first try to understand what exactly is this cartonization planning. Okay, and then we will jump into the system and see the step-by-step -step activities. Before that, I would just like to understand, have you guys ever worked on cartonization planning before? In EWM or in WM, have you uh, used similar kind of a feature for cartonization planning? No, not for WM, Roni. Okay, for EWM, have you guys, I mean, because we've got people working in EWM as well, have you got the opportunity to work on uh, projects where cartonization planning has been implemented or you have you guys have implemented cartonization planning? Okay, so I will take the silence as a no. So now what we need to understand first then is the uh, concept of cartonization planning. So what happens is that, in as I mentioned, in large organizations, let us take a new sheet. Let me just first hide this. So let's say, for example, this is a carton. Carton size large. Okay. And this particular carton can say, for example, hold up to 12 bottles. Okay. So let's imagine that within this, within this particular carton, you have got all these different shelves where we can push the products. Let's assume that this particular carton has can store can uh, we can store twelve bottles inside this carton and pack it to pack it and send it to the customer. Now you will have a carton which is bigger in size than this. Okay, so this will be say for example double extra large. And this carton would be used to ship either larger products or more products. Okay. Now, since we have taken example of bottles, so we know that, say, for companies like uh, beverage manufacturing companies, they have got different, like Coca Cola, Pepsi, and all these companies, they will have different sizes of their packaging units, like one liter, 1 1.5 liter, 2 liter, 500 ml, like this, right? So the bigger bottles, obviously, we cannot if it's a two liter bottle right so in india also nowadays we get the two liter bottles as well so if we are trying to push the two liter bottles in a carton so we need to make sure first of all that the, we are selecting that kind of a packaging material where the product inside the packaging material which we are putting in is not damaged so we do want to make sure that it is not squeezed it's not packed too tightly so that the product when it will finally reach to the customer it should reach to the customer in a good state. That is number one business requirement, right? Number two, we need to make sure because at the end of the day, we are not manufacturing now, suppose a company like Coca-Cola, they will not be manufacturing the cartons, right? Obviously, they'll be buying those cartons or those packaging materials from a different vendor. So that is also a cost for the company. So what happens is that when before the final uh, pallet is being constructed, when it goes through a packing work center, we need to make sure 
that the material is packed in the best size of carton and what happens is that now suppose in this extra large box so this is a big box right so instead of now this box say for example can hold 24 bottles of one liter each okay now instead of that i out of mistake or out of laziness or whatever or it's or, or out of a human error i just sent 12 bottles because the order was for 12 bottles and instead of packing it into a large carton which is this one i will use this extra large or double extra large and i will send it to the customer from a customer perspective it does not make any difference because at the end of the day they might not be using the same carton for their final storage they might be again preparing a different packaging unit okay but when it comes to our cost effectiveness then what we have done is that where we could have sent this in a large carton instead of that what i did was i have sent it in a double extra large carton which was not necessary so this is where companies have understood that there is a loss because nowadays more and more companies are trying to see from where they can cut down their costs, especially the manufacturing companies and the distribution uh, logistics warehouses. So they try to see where they can cut down the cost. So one of the co cost cutting measures will be to use more automated devices, reduce the paperwork, right? But paperwork reduction can be done in terms of picking list reduction. You use the tablet and generate the picking list over there. Uh, you know, uh, scanning, use scanners, handle scanners instead of manual picks, or use automated devices for the picking instead of human uh, humans doing the picking or using forklifts. But at the end of the day, you still have to pack the products before you send it to the customer, right? And it has to be packed inside the carton. It has to be uh, packed inside a pallet or a box or a bottle, whatever. So we need to make sure that the packaging materials are being utilized to the optimum level because of all these business reasons. Now, if we are keeping it to just the human judgment, definitely it will not be a cent percent accuracy when it comes to using the packaging material. Definitely it's not going to be, especially in cases where there are huge number of uh, transactions happening inside a warehouse and a huge number of cartons are coming for packing or repacking into a work center, the operator or the person handling the, that particular packaging work center will not have so much of time to make sure that he's doing the right scan. Okay, so what happens is that in these kind of cases, so generally when we talk about a packing work center, so we will be going inside, there will be a particular table huge table where the items will flow in so that table will be somewhere near the conveyor belt if there is a conveyor belt otherwise it will be positioned in a strategic location in the warehouse okay so when i say strategic location it will be somewhere over here in the middle in front of the racks or nearby these racks where the packaging can be done after the material is before it is being loaded onto the racks or during picking scenario after the uh, item has been picked it will be going to the packing area okay so just to uh, give you guys an example i would suggest let us quickly check a packing work center hopefully i don't know i've not seen any videos on youtube let's see if there is anything uh packing work center in warehouse so you see uh, these trays that I was talking about yesterday. So these are also picking trays basically. And this is a cart. So they will be moving this cart across the warehouse. This is basically they are doing manual picking. Okay. And they are using these trays are called carts. And you see the barcodes over here. So this will be your, so when you're picking it from the rack and you are push, uh, storing the material in this particular Tray, say for example, so you will be scanning this barcode as well as an operator. So this is your destination storage bin confirmation for the warehouse task. So yesterday, if you remember, we were once we were using the Fury application for RF. Then once we had validated the source bin, the next step was to validate the destination bin. 
right? So the destination bin would be, in this case, it will be these trees. So you see what they are using. These are now custom applications that have been built. So similar applications can be built on Fury as well. So our SAP standard Fury applications are not so advanced. So you can see there is a voice confirmation coming in. The moment the operator is, I mean, this is not related to our cartonization topic, but I'm just sharing what you are seeing, what I'm seeing in the video, I'm just sharing it with you. So if you see that confirmation message coming in, right? So we can do similar kind of integration nowadays in SAP as well. We can enable voice features inside when your picking is being confirmed. Okay. Now, this is where this is the packing work center that I was talking about. So in their warehouse, this since it is a small warehouse, you can see that they are doing manual picks and these are basically, I think, garments that are being used. So uh, you would see that they are these basically this cart has been pushed towards the packing work center and this lady, she is picking up the items and then she is pushing it to the I mean, she will be doing the packing over here. Okay, so I think um, more or less you guys have understood what I was trying to portray over here. So once if, after she has taken the material, you see she has a weighing scale over there. She is weighing it and then she's packing it inside that particular small bag, right? So based on the weight, she will also choose the bag. I don't know whether it's there in this video or not, but I'm sure that is how they are operating inside their warehouse. Now this example which we saw. This was more or less to give you an idea of how the packing work center looks like, okay? But in large warehouses, what happens is that the way you saw that table and you saw that she was scanning, there were next to the printer from where the label came out, there were some tags which were there, barcode tags. So those tags will be having the packaging material barcodes and she will be an, an operator will be scanning those particular packaging materials which will be used to do the packing okay so is the business context of cartonization understood guys are you clear with this thing because if i simply show you the system there is no there's no point in understanding it because at the end of the day you guys have to deliver projects right you will be delivering it for your clients whether it's a support or a rollout or an implementation. So if you should have, you need to understand what is the basic requirement from business perspective. So is it clear for all of you? Yeah. Okay, good. Now let us move into the system, okay? So I think this is where for us as functional consultants, it becomes really interesting. And that is why we are called consultants, right? So we are just not simply doing coding or we are just not simply doing the configuration in the system we are understanding the business giving our suggestions doing the solutioning as well so it's a 
hybrid job where we are doing business consulting as well. We are doing system consulting as well. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so in our cartonization example, to just to make it simpler in the interest of time as well, I'm not going to create many packaging materials uh, because yes, in a real time warehouse, you will have different kinds of packaging materials. Okay. But just for our understanding and from the time perspective, I am going to just use one cartonization packaging material. Maintain it as large carton. But you guys can also create your own packaging materials and uh, you can while you're testing it in the system. So you can just copy the material which I have created and then you can then. Uh, so since the material master uh, IDOC interface is activated for this server. You don't have to do any transfers. Automatically, the material will get generated. Just that you need to maintain the EWM product master uh, for the for your particular warehouse. That's it. Okay. So I will show you all those things step by step. First thing. So remember, cartonization planning is not a simple topic. So it is a combination of a lot of different things that we have understood and seen so far in the system. So please don't get confused or don't get boggled. If the flow becomes a bit here, I mean, uh, because we need to jump from one set of configuration to another set of configuration. So you have to listen to the recordings uh, every time if you guys are stuck somewhere while you're doing your configuration. But if you guys don't understand anything, please stop me in the middle and you can ask me questions. Okay, because it's not a simple step by step configuration. Okay, so we go to goods issue process and within here we go to cartonization planning and we go to define package building profile. Okay, so within package building profile. So this is something you would see once all the entire configuration is done. We will be assigning this package building profile in a cartonization planning master data determination now that is being used for because if we are not maintaining that master data then cartonization planning will not be determined for our warehouse so there are different combinations on which we maintain the master data and packaging package building profile sorry is one of the elements that we are maintaining in that permutation and combination okay so this package building profile so uh, you can see I have maintained one which is for the demo uh, purpose. If you want to use another one, it's up to you. You can create your own package building profile as well. So over here you see there are these different controls which is basically enabling whenever a carton is being constructed, whether you are allowing mixing or not of different products inside one carton, whether it should be a full package or not, whether incomplete products are allowed or not, incomplete packages are allowed or not. Okay, mixing of layering of different products is allowed or not. Uh, product height, whether it should be considered or not considered, because when we talk about dimensions of a product inside a carton, so it's length, breadth, and length, width, and height, right? So these are the so the height will also work diagonally, right? Suppose we talk about items like uh, television. So television, when we go to buy a television, I'm sure you guys will be knowing that the 55 inch, 65 inch, 75 inches, those inches are not like straight cut length. It is the diagonal length of the screen. So that is how it is being measured, right? So whether you want to um, ignore the product height, whether you don't want to ignore the product, use the product height when the package is being constructed. So all those things convert unit of measurement to base unit of measurement, all these details you can control. I have not done such a complex package uh, building profile. I've just used incomplete products will also be allowed because for testing purpose, I don't want the system to every time stop me and then I'm making changes in the master data as well. Okay, because that is also a time consuming activity. And then I've just uh, activated the checks, checkbox for ignoring the incomplete packages. So once this is done, we will save it. Okay. Now, the next step would be to go and define the number ranges for the identifications of planned. So when they say PS, PSHU, so it means planned shipping handling unit. So why is it called planned shipping handling unit? 
any idea, any guess? You might hear me sipping something, so I'm just uh, having a glass of juice. Okay, guys, so please ignore the uh, sound. Yeah, quick question, guys. Why is it called planned shipping handling unit when it comes to organization planning? Why do you think it's called planned shipping handling unit? It's a very simple question, right? Why is it not called a shipping handling unit? Because we are so, planning the cartonization. Yes, you're right. Very, very good. But like, I'm planning it. But why is it not called the like final uh, FSHU, final shipping handling unit? Because the system gives me a flexibility. So the system is doing the planning for me on my behalf, right? So which particular carton I need to pack my materials into. But it is not a hard and fast rule that I need to use this, right? So if I want to use a different carton, say, for example, now the system has proposed a large carton size. But if I want to, instead of this large, I want to send it in a ex double extra large. I can still do that. So that's why this one, which the system will be uh, proposing, it's called the PSHU. It's a planned shipping handling unit. It is not the final handling unit which will be shipped to the customer. I can send the same one to the customer as well. That is also possible. But it is not something which is mandatory. As a packager within the warehouse, I have full rights to, again, repack it into a different handling unit with a different packaging material. I can still do that. Okay. So from that perspective, it is always a planned shipping handling. It's not a final shipping handling unit. Okay. So if we go back to the configuration, you see there are number ranges which have been defined. And for this warehouse, already there is a number range interval, which is defined for the PS HU. So once the number range intervals are done, so the next step is to make sure that we are defining the cartonization planning as our warehouse number level. So that is very important, okay? So if you click on configure cartonization planning, so you would see there are two things that have been defined over here, determination procedure and PS HU, which is the layout, okay? So later you would see, once we go to the definition of a work center, the layout which we will assign to the work center, which is to be used for cartonization planning, the layout we will select as plan shipping handling unit, PSHU, okay? And the determination procedure is zero cap. So these are the two things that we need to assign to our warehouse. Only then the cartonization planning will be activated and triggered. Remember, each and every configuration that we will discuss today is important. Without this, the cartonization planning will not be triggered. Now, the next set of configuration is very important to understand. Why? Because this is a techno functional configuration. Remember that. This is a Techno functional configuration. It's not a pure and pure out and out functional configuration. Why is it? Why is that so? Because we are talking about algorithm profiles. Okay, so we go inside this. Now the first thing you would see these are the standard algorithm. Obviously, since we don't have a developer for our training program, so I'm not going to define any Z algorithm. Okay, but I will. I will make. I'll show you where exactly you can do the changes okay because whenever we are using cartonization planning i have seen it in my experience so far i have worked in four projects where we have implemented cartonization planning in all those four projects different scenarios were there some of them had third party cartonization planning tools which we have to integrate with ewm so that means the algorithm logic which was there in the third party tool same algorithm logic needs to be built over here okay especially wherever there are automated storage and retrieval systems asrs warehouses there you would see those uh <coughs> softwares the third party tools which are running the asrs uh, conveyor belts they would also have cartonization planning feature within them so that cartonization planning feature and our cartonization planning feature we need to sync okay so our coding needs to match with their um coding otherwise it will not work okay so therefore we need to whenever we are doing those and using cartonization planning 
most of the time we will not be using the standard algorithm we will be creating our own algorithm okay our own z algorithm and within that we can make a lot of changes now you see over here within the algorithm we can maintain the properties so over here right now i have not maintained any value i have just maintained the warehouse number because i'm just i'm not going to use any z value or z filter value i'm not going to use right now in the standard sap1 algorithm for cartonization okay so after this you just maintain your warehouse number over here similarly whenever you are doing your test case if you're testing over here in the server or in your sandbox systems if you are using the standard algorithm no need to maintain any value over here okay you can just maintain the warehouse number after that if you go inside the algorithm sequence so over here you would see that there are these different sequences and these sequences in turn if you select one of them and go inside the assign algorithms to algorithm sequence so you would see this sequence id has been mapped this algorithm which is defined earlier sap1 so this sap1 is over here didn't define algorithms so this sap1 is assigned to this algorithm sequence id okay so after that once the algorithm sequence id is defined you go to the algorithm profiles for cartonization okay so when you go inside algorithm profiles for cartonization you would see this is an algorithm profile we have created for us zcar and over here i have used the sequence id zcar okay and if you see over here this is our sequence id zcar and within zcar which algorithm is being used it is sap1 okay now over here you have got other options as well say for example because cartonization planning generally whenever we are defining cartonization planning in the system we will be using the packaging specification okay so i have created one packaging specification in the system for our product and i will show it to you later today how it needs to be maintained so if you want to activate cartonization planning without the packaging specification that means within the algorithm profile that has been designed within that itself you would be uh, writing the logic as in how the system is going to determine the correct packaging material in that case yes you are free to activate this checkbox and dim check means dimension check okay so if you want to activate this without the dimension check you are allowed to do that as well okay once this is being done now from a standard perspective this particular setup will also work for you if you just want to do the testing from a testing perspective this would also work for you now the next step is to understand how the system is going to understand the algorithm profile so the algorithm profiles over here that has been mapped is just one for our warehouse so we don't have to worry about it but there might be certain warehouses having different kinds of products for which we will have different kinds of algorithm profiles because same kind of products i can let's say for example in the company which is manufacturing cola drinks as well it's also manufacturing chips okay so the chips the way it is being packaged and the beverages the way it is being packaged will be completely different right so in that case you will have to define different algorithm profiles so that the system doesn't get confused because these are completely different set of products similarly if you talk about pharma industry as well as i had mentioned there are certain products which needs to be transported back in in containers where the temperature will be sustained otherwise the medicine inside the product will be damaged okay so that's a precondition for the uh, medicine to survive so in those cases you will need you need to make sure that you are uh, taking the items in ice boxes right so those are different kinds of packaging materials so therefore you need to make sure that the algorithm profile so the entire 
condition of your algorithm is in how and where it needs to be packed. So that needs to be completely different for those kind of products. So therefore, you will have different kind of algorithm profiles. In our case, we have just defined one, assigned one algorithm profile. So it does not make any sense for defining access sequence. But defining access sequence comes into the picture when you have multiple algorithm profiles. So what it is saying is that how the system will understand which one to pick up, which algorithm profile it should consider based on warehouse process type, route, ship to party, transportation group. Next option is warehouse process type activity area. And the third one is warehouse process type only. So this is the sequence it is going to follow when it is trying to determine the algorithm profile. Now this access sequence, which you see very interesting is something which you must be wondering where are these fields when we were defining the algorithm profiles there were these fields were not there right so it is not there in that particular configuration but it is here so let me show you the transaction okay so do you see over here we have the warehouse number and then the warehouse process type, activity area, route, ship to party, the algorithm profile. So based on now, if you see the access sequence, which was here. <clears throat> so the first one is based on warehouse process type, route, route origin, ship to party and transportation group. So I have maintained these entries. So it will pick this particular algorithm profile. As I said, there is there's no other choice over here. But if you have multiple algorithm profiles, you will have accordingly as many lines over here. And based on the access sequence, the system is going to determine the algorithm profile. Okay. So the transaction to maintain this is so that this is the transaction for cartonization planning determination it's a master data remember this needs to be done in every environment if you guys are implementing cardinization planning that means it should be maintained in development quality pre-production production all the servers which will be there okay so it will be a part of your cutover activity so after that we again go back into configuration so after this is defining of process profiles for cartonization planning. Sorry, my bad. I clicked on the documentation. So the cartonization planning, when it is going to get triggered, you sorry, you can define the process profile over here. So you can see that what I have selected is that the cartonization planning will be triggered for waves. So you can select whether the cartonization planning will be uh, trigger during the time of outbound delivery order creation itself or if you want to do it during warehouse order creation now remember cartonization planning is a topic which is also uh, which can also be uh, implemented in the system when you are implementing transportation management sap transportation management or sap tm okay so if you are using that particular functionality then you will be using this transportation planning system uh, field over here, okay? But we are not going to discuss this right now. As I mentioned next week, we will be covering the TM and EWM integration part. That is when we will be covering this topic as well, okay? And you can see the creation of shipping issues, the handling units. This is, this is also something which we can activate from here. Shipping issue created during picking, shipping issue created during packing. Okay. So once this is done, the process profile is managed. Okay. Yes, everything is fine. So next is the determination of process profiles. As I had mentioned for us, the based on this warehouse process type and activity area, the process profile has been mapped and we have just one process profile so it should not be an issue okay so once this is being done so the next step is to now go and define a warehouse order creation rule so the warehouse order creation rule is something which we had discussed yesterday right 
now why do we need to define a new warehouse order creation tool? So the reason behind that is because we need to make sure that when we are defining the when the cartonization planning is triggered, the warehouse order creation rule, the storage process, everything is only relevant for the cartonization planning perspective. Because in cartonization planning, there might be different work centers, different packing areas in the warehouse where everywhere I might not be requiring cartonization planning, all the packing areas. So in that case, I would have to bifurcate or classify which are the work centers for which I want to have cartonization planning. Now, based on that, I will be creating a separate storage process. And within that storage process, I will be defining the steps. Okay. And in turn, these steps, this storage process, sorry, will be assigned to my warehouse order creation rule. Okay. So to go into warehouse order creation rule, as I said, the cartonization planning configuration is something where we'll be jumping from one set of configuration to the other set of configuration. So from here, we will move out. We will go to cross process settings. And within cross process settings, we will go into warehouse order. Okay. So within warehouse order, the first thing that we need to ensure is create a packing profile for warehouse order creation rule. And this is the one which has been created. So this is for the packing profile ZCAR, which I have created. So this packing profile is for cartonization. The packaging mode is not simple algorithm. Remember the one which we used yesterday, it's a by default simple algorithm which we had used. Over here, it will be complex algorithm. The sorting rule, it's up to you how you want to set up the sorting rule for the packaging profile. Creation of issues is activated. Assignment of warehouse tasks to handling unit is activated. A warehouse task will be split when too large for an HU. That will be based on the quantity of the order. Okay. And these are the other the other uh, checkboxes which are available are splitting of warehouse tasks based on alternate unit of measurement. And skip WT. And check the LWH length, width, and height. So for my packaging profile, I have maintained this. And this is the same sort set of settings that you can maintain for your packaging profile as well while you are creating your test packing profile. Remember, you need to create this. Otherwise, your WOCR will not understand how to generate the how to generate the handling unit, the BSHU. So once this packing profile has been gen, uh, has been configured, the next set of configuration is to define the warehouse order creation rule. So we need to go again inside define creation rule for warehouse orders. And over here, so I'll just check for 1710. So for 1710, you can see the warehouse order creation rule, which has been defined is ZCAR. And for ZCAR, the warehouse order creation category is pick and pack. So pick and pack is the warehouse order creation category. And the limit, I have set it as WOCRs. Uh, I mean, the one which we had created yesterday. Uh, that should be fine. That should not be an issue. The warehouse order sorting is PIPA, pick part. Packing profile is just the one which we have created. And shipping packing profile also remains the same. And if you see over here, I have assigned the storage process ZCAR. Now, before you assign the storage process ZCAR, Another important thing is you first need to create this storage process. Okay. So what we need to do, we need to go inside cross process settings again, and this time under process oriented storage control. So under process oriented storage control, you need to write away start from external steps because we are not going to use an existing step. So the external steps of cartonization were missing. So I had to do the configuration. So you can see I have defined two steps, cartonization step one and cartonization step two. First one is for picking and the next one is for packing. Okay. So the internal steps are something which SAP does not recommend us to change. So we will generally be using the same internal process steps, but external steps are something that you can create based on your requirement. But you have to assign an external step to an internal step while you're doing the configuration. And over here, the direction you can see, 
the one which I have selected is stock removal and internal movement, and the other one is put away stock removal and internal movement. Okay. So once this is done, the next thing that you need to do is define your step. What exactly is going to happen, right? So the cartonization one, this one is a standard quick step. So for this, you don't have to define anything. You need to define for step number two. So if you go inside over here, and this one is the warehouse process type, okay? So 3070 is the warehouse process step, which I have assigned to the external process step. And over here, I have not maintained the destination bin, but I can maintain the destination bin as well over here, okay? Say, for example, I want to use the work center destination bin, so I have not created any I've created a work center, but I have not defined a separate uh, storage bin for that. So we need to create that and then we will assign it over here. Okay, but the step has been defined. Okay. So for this, let me just quickly open another session. Yes, so you have extended warehouse management, extended warehouse management, work center. So we go inside define work center and over here 1710. Okay, so this one layout. Okay. Yes, so we can use so this is the work center, if you can see. So the external step that is assigned to this work center is CAR2. And the storage type that is assigned to it is Y831. So what I would do is I will use the same storage type. And I can put it over here. Okay. And I will just create a bin. So once this is being done, so one important thing is the assignment. So once we have done the storage process, so now this storage process, if you see, I will go over here. So this is the storage process which has been defined, ZCAR. And within this storage process, I have assigned the two steps, CAR1 and CAR2. Okay, so CAR1, we don't need to define anything because it's the normal picking step. Okay, so the picking step will get triggered based on the stock removal strategy that has been maintained in the backend. Okay, so for that, you don't need to define anything. But once this is done, the step number two will be triggered, which will be to create the warehouse task from the pick location to the destination bin for the work center for cartonization. For this particular storage type and this particular storage bin, what is going to happen is that if I am going to maintain as a destination, the system will try to again create a warehouse task to send it to the same packing work center. Okay, so we will not maintain this. Okay, apologies for this. We will not maintain it over here. Later on, we will see the assignment, but we're not maintained over here right now for step number two. Now once this storage process has been defined, we will go to the warehouse order. So this is work center, my bad. Where is the warehouse order creation rule here? So we will assign the storage process ZCAR over here and then the CAP compatibility. So the CAP compatibility needs to be activated. So CAP compatibility is nothing but cartonization planning compatibility. Remember <clears throat> for the a warehouse order creation rule uh, to have cartonization planning this small checkbox is also very important otherwise it is not going to work remember that okay so once this is done another important thing is to make sure that the warehouse order creation rule is assigned to the correct activity area the way we did it yesterday okay so let's see so warehouse number is 1710. 
okay so for activity area uh z c a r so you can see for activity area y021 the warehouse order creation rule z c a r has been mapped okay so the system will try to pick do the picking from this particular activity area so this particular activity activity area in turn we need to check which is the storage type that is mapped to this activity area the area s so i'll just straight away go to this table 1710 activity area was y021 activity is pick so this activity area is linked to storage type y021 and let me quickly check the stock if there is any stock in this particular storage type okay so fields for selection mgtyp 1710 so y021 okay yeah so we've got some stock over here so we've got stock for this particular product so which is good because we will be using this product going ahead so that is fine right so We just need to make sure that the product also has the right stock removal control indicator mapped within it. Okay. So for the storage type Y021, let us quickly check in configuration what is the stock removal control indicator mapping so that we can assign that to our material master. So for that, we need to again go into goods issue process. We need to go into strategies and then determine stock storage type search sequence for stock removal. So the search sequence is Y0, uh, sorry. So for the storage type is Y021. So my expectation is that since the naming convention has been like that, so it should be the same one. But over here, uh, I cannot see the, so it's not been named like this. So let me just try to see, it should be here somewhere over here. Let's see. So yes, so Y021 has been mapped over here, if you see, okay. So, so this is removal of pallet quantities. YPQ1, so YPQ1 is something which we can use so that the system will hit that search sequence first. And then we go inside this. So, YPQ1 is this one. And the warehouse process type, which is mapped to this, is this. Uh, so let YPQ1, Y214, and YNPF, right? So this is the setup which has been. So Y214 is the warehouse process type. And YPQ1 is the storage type search sequence, which has been mapped to this particular warehouse. So what we need to ensure is when we are using the removal indicator so you can see for this particular determination the removal indicator has not been used so what i will do is i will use the removal indicator and then i will map the removal indicator along with this particular combination okay so right now let me just sorry let me just go back once i'll go over here So I will use this position SRCA. Okay, and then we go over here, YPQ1, so 
set CMR. Okay, perfect. Now I'll just go inside the product master in EWM. Warehouse data over here, ZCAR. So now we have done the mapping of the stock removal strategy as well. So after this, <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to make sure that the configuration for the warehouse process type is also in place and the determination of the warehouse process type has also been mapped okay so for that also again we need to jump back into configuration so what we will do is we will go is there somewhere it is open yeah over here so we will go inside cross process settings again and within cross process settings now we will go and see the warehouse process type which has been defined so 3070 was not existing for uh, the warehouse 1710 so i had created earlier this particular warehouse process type so you can see this is the warehouse process type which has been created now this has been simply created because if you remember in step number two car2 in the storage process uh, I, we had done the assignment of this particular warehouse process type Okay, so that means when it will be moved from the, once the picking is done from to the next bin, so it would be the warehouse process type which should be used is 3070, okay? So once that has been done, what we need to do is the determination. So for the determination, we have defined a new control indicator. So the control indicator that has been de de defined for this is ZC, which you can see I have defined this. This is the process type determination indicator for cartonization. Now, this process type determination indicator needs to be assigned to which process type? Is it 3070? So, the process type determination indicator, ZC, now we will be assigning it with which particular warehouse process type? 3070 or some other one? So, you see, we are not assigning it to 3070. We are assigning it to over here Y214. In standard, if you're using 2010 warehouse process type, 2010 warehouse process type, please do the assignment of the process type determination indicator to your 2010 warehouse process type with this combination. Outbound delivery document type, delivery priority, and then process type determination indicator. Okay. Now, once that is done, what we need to now look into is the so work center also we have already checked i had shown to you that how we are defining the work center and what else can we do okay now i think we should move into the packaging specification okay so we have done all the relevant configuration which is required from a organization planning perspective so what the second most important thing that we need to do is also do the packaging specification definition okay uh, i also wanted to quickly show you the Okay, so we can just take away. So the cartonization body is over here. Okay, now one second. It has also been. Yes. So this is the body where. So as I had told you, that we need to write our own algorithm, right? So whenever you are using a body to identify the body for cartonization planning, you need to use this one. Okay, the first one was for process profiles. So if you want to have your own determination for process profiles as well for cartonization planning, you can define your own Z logic for that as well. 
okay so nothing has been defined no body has been used for the determination of cap process profile so whenever i execute this body so that's why the system is taking me for the implementation body implementation okay i don't have a developer access key so i'm not going to be able to show you how to do it body implementation will be done by an abapper okay i know how to do it but i won't be able to show you since i don't have a developer access key and that's a not that's that is a technical training and that's not a part of your curriculum as well but in general you should know so the evapor generally there are two kinds of evapor the experienced ewm evapor would be saying that yes that person he, he will say he or she will say that he will find the body on his or her own self but some of the evapors will be dependent on the functional consultants they will say you please give us the body okay and we should know actually the body that should be implemented as a ewm functional consultant okay at least i would say that so you go use this one and over here you can see the body implementation these are the enhancement options so the one which has been implemented over here are standard ones nothing has been changed over here so then there are two types of body implementations that we can do there is a body implementation wherein already the fix the code fix is already there it's like an sap node so the moment you implement and execute it the that particular part of the code which has been fixed will start getting Uh, uh, applied in the functionality where it was fixed, okay. But if uh, you want to write something Z and you're not satisfied with that, that is also an option that you can do. So the implementation that you can see over here, which has been done, these are all standard implementations, okay. So what you can do, how you can further identify these bodies, is what you need to do. You need to go into SC19 transaction. and over here just select one of the bodies on this and this is immaterial of any body that you are checking in EWM or even in S4 because with the advent of S4 now there is the concept of user exits has gone away and you need to use bodies in your other modules as well right in mmsd everything you are using bodies so to understand the implementing class you go inside and you will find this is where the implementing class will be this is the implementing class cl underscore cap underscore min underscore h is a standard class okay so you double click on the class if you have access to se24 transaction the system will open this particular view and within this there are these different methods which are there so the how the architecture works just in brief i'll explain so there will be a class within the class there will be different methods and these methods will be performing or executing the different activities for a particular functionality okay so there will be a method to get the data there will be a met method to confirm the data there will be a method to post the data so like this there are different methods which are defined within a particular class so if you want to see what is written inside the class you first have to go inside the method and then you need to understand what exactly is being written okay so if you go inside this execute method this is where the parameters for the packaging specification are being passed okay so this is where the parameters for the packaging specification are being passed and you can see this is say for example so this is where the auxiliary packaging material is being fetched okay now also one more important thing whenever you are using bodies is that if you go into properties and then over here attributes so you will see all these different attributes over here right so these attributes in turn have got different values okay so you can use these attributes or if you are creating your using this body you are creating your own z class you can add additional values over here okay so this is how it works so if you go inside this one say for example so the associated type this is the data structure okay so over here say for example if i want to go and see inside what is this data structure so this data structure combines uh, it is a combination of all these things the material number warehouse number stock id batch id stock type all these different things are available over here now if you want to enhance this for your z functionality yes you can do it this structure can also be 
enhanced with Z fields. So that is where you need to create a Z class, a Z method, and then within that Z method, you can use the standard structures, the structures which are over here and enhance those structures. So that is how you actually use a body. Okay. So when you're writing the algorithm profile, so you will be using this execute, this, this particular method, the execute method. Okay. So within this, you will be writing the entire logic for the algorithm, how the system should determine. Okay. So now we have the configuration, which is already completed in the system. Now what we are going to do is we are going to move into the interesting topic of cap packaging specification. So packaging specification is important from partnerization planning perspective because the system is dependent on this packaging specification to un in order to understand how it should do the packing. Okay, as simple as that. Now, if you see over here, I have created this packaging specification for large cartons. So let us go and see inside. So generally, when you have got different cartons sizes, remember the packaging material, which is very important to be mapped within the packaging specification, should be the respective one which for which you have defined it. Okay. Now, in this particular example, if you see the product that I have used is the same product EWM S4-01 and the condition. So within the packaging specification in EWM, you would see the condition records over here. Okay, so these are condition types and within this condition types, you've got these condition records. So this condition type is comprising of the supply chain unit, the algorithm profile, route, packaging profile, and based on this combination, a condition record is getting generated. So this zero uh, BDL and C, zero CAP, these are the condition types predefined condition types in the system. These are standard condition types. But if you want to define your own condition type as well, does the system allow you to do that? Yes, the system does allow us to do that. So if time permits today, we will go through that round of configuration as well for packaging specification. Okay. So if you see over here, now the condition type has been set up for zero BDL and zero CAP. Now what it exactly means? How will we understand that? So to understand that, what I will do is I will just click on create second version over here. And if you click on F4 over here, then you will see the different condition types which are available. So zero BDL is for warehouse order creation and zero cap is for warehouse order creation for cartonization planning. Okay. So these are the standard condition types and the fields are coming as per the condition table which we have assigned or created within this particular condition type. And th these are the fields based on which we need to maintain the condition record combination. Okay. So over here, now the whenever you are creating a packaging specification, please remember that you should not change the existing packaging specification. You should always create a second version. So you saw where to open this packaging specification up, I had clicked on that button, create second version, and then the uh, these fields have become uh, editable. Okay. So now what I will do, I'll not create the second version. I'm just showing it to you guys. So over here, you maintain the product for which you want to do the patternization. Maintain the quantity, how you want to do it. Okay. And after that, so this length, width, height, volume, everything has come in from your material master. It is automatically coming. So this is not something that I have filled up. Okay. Then most important thing is if you go over here, then if you want the handling unit to be created, so this HQ creation should be activated over here on the right side of the screen. Then the target quantity you can maintain minimum quantity also is something which you can maintain if you have got layers inside the packing you can maintain that as well for me it's a very simple packaging it's a, just a box i'll pick the material and put it inside the box there's no layering nothing but if you want to maintain layer number of layers all those details also you can maintain okay 
layers means nothing but like over here say for example for this large carton you i can consider this particular part as a layer say for example and this is another layer like this okay so this will be the partition between the two layers okay so like this also we can do packaging right for certain items it is required where you need to set up the layers and then do the packaging so all those things you can set it up over here okay then comes the important part which is your element assignment so within the element assignment you need to maintain the packaging material now this carton one that you see this is a material which i have created today and this material i have just copied from an existing packaging material you can do the same okay and then maintain the key things that are required within the packaging material which is your handling unit type in your wm packaging data the rest of the things the material type and everything it should be the material type should be verp which is your packaging material and then once you create it so you can maintain the product over here so the moment you create the product since it is an embedded system so automatically the product gets created in ewms when okay so how so that is one important thing as well so whenever you are creating a product okay so in this from ecc perspective we created an mm01 mm02 is changed mm03 is displayed from ewm perspective so the moment the product is created the transaction that we should check is scwm mat1 no from an apo perspective the transaction that we should check because scwm mat1 definitely will not be there because that is the warehouse view scwm mat1 supply chain warehouse management but sap apo is the check which i need to perform to ensure that the warehouse is sorry the product is created in my ewm environment as well so you push in you go to this transaction sap apo mat1 okay so this is the global product master the apo product master you click on the global data and click on display so if the product comes over here then perfect that means it has uh, come in over here right so, so sorry this is not the product car1 was the product So carton one, you see, this is the product which I had created. So this is today's date, and this is the. These are the product details. So once the product is created, you then have to go to SCWM Mat One, and then from here you need to click on Create. So once you click on Create. So the storage data for product one already exists because I've already created it. So if you click on change, the most important thing is maintain the warehouse. But if it's a new product, you need to maintain the warehouse data. So over here from this is the packaging material, I don't need to maintain any field over here. The view just needs to be maintained. Understand that. Over here, it's not mandatory to maintain any field. I'll just save it. So that's it. Your warehouse data is created. So this tab should be created basically. What it means is that then the material exists for your warehouse number. And after that, you can do the assignment over here. Before that, if you're assigning it, it is not going to work. Okay. Now, this work step is not the step that we are going to assign in terms of our external steps. That is not something that we are going to do. This weight, volume, and dimension, again, this is something which is coming in directly from the product master. Okay, so you can compare the uh, product ma uh, material master in ECC as well. You can do that. Now, over here, you see this checkbox. If I activate this, so these things will be editable. Then it will be editable and I can change it. But I'm not going to do that. So if I will let the system do the calculation on its own okay because it is not possible to maintain the weight and volume for each product like this manually one by one so we want the the system to take the data automatically from the product order material master again the handling unit type over here is important which we need to maintain quantity classification we can maintain it's up to us it's carton quantity pallet quantity if you want to maintain you can maintain and if you have a separate strategy defined for that you can maintain the quantity classification over here as well 
if we are using evaluated services, we can assign the external step over here. Evaluated services is not something we are using over here. So the external step is nothing but the process oriented control step for evaluated services. We are not using evaluated services over here. So therefore, we are not going to assign any external step over here. Okay. The rest of the things are something if we have rounding rules and all those things, we can add it. But generally, we are not using all these kind of rules over here. But yes, we can create multiple levels of packing as well. That means first it needs to be uh, packed into a box and then into a pallet. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So then you will have to create multiple levels of packing over here. Okay, so you see there is only one level of packing over here. So you can create multiple levels of packing from this particular level. Okay, so over here I've just kept it very simple. I've just created one level of packing and then we will just will not save this because this is the second version. I'll just move out. Like you said that we have created a packing material as a cotton bun. Yeah. So it's an yes. embedded system. So once we create in the ECC this cotton one, it's automatically be reflecting in the product mastering EWM. Am I right? Yes. Because the I will I will tell you why it is happening. Okay. So there is a reason behind that. So again, we'll go to the distribution model. Yeah, sorry, could you complete your question first? I, I did not even yeah, that, complete your question. Yeah, sorry. that first, <laughs> for the embedded, just want to know that because we have to not run or manually push that the material, it will be automatically reflected in the product master. Exactly. It will be automatically reflected in the product master. So you don't have to do, um, you don't need to maintain anything separately for this. Okay, so there is actually a ZEW mat. Uh, there's a mat mass uh, object which is assigned. Mm -hmm. So based on which this particular uh, mapping happens. Okay, so mm -hmm. over here I cannot see the mat mass being maintained over here, so I need to check it. But the mat mass. So I will show you this transaction, BD10. So this BD10 transaction is generally being used when you are sending uh, your material from one logical system to the other logical system. Because mm -hmm. although we have one box, right? So we have got two logical systems. One is the ECC logical system and the S4 logical system, sorry. And one, one is our EW logical system. So okay. once for one material also, if you activate this automatically based on that, this particular map mass being enabled within the distribution model, the system automatically keeps creating. So you don't have to keep doing it every time you are generating a new material. Mm -hmm. Now, in decentralized environment, what happens is that you need to keep a batch job set for this BD10 transaction and keep it, keep it running in the backend. But still, since that mat mask object, the message type will be assigned to your outbound uh, AAD document, so then mm -hmm. automatically the material will be triggered. So for this one, if you see the map mass object has been mapped, the material master, yeah. right? So now based on this, so this is at the logical system level. So based on this, the communication is happening and it's happening both ways as well. Okay, so it's not just like from the ECC uh, perspective, but generally, yes, so you will be within the map mass structure so there are the fields which are within that particular message type. The segments are there where the segments have been defined. These are predefined segments, which fields will be going from ECC level to EWM level. So you see, we are just maintaining one tab over there in EWM. So that particular data is not available in ECC. The other data like the uh, generic data, basic data one, basic data two, unit of measurement, all this information are being passed from ECC, that is because it is a part of the segment under the message type map mass. Now, if yeah. I have some Z fields, say for example, in the material master, it can be possible, right? There might be some C fields in the material master. So that will not be a part of this map mass segment. So I need to create a new message type Z map mass, Z EW map mass. So if you guys are working in EWM projects, you will see that there will be a Z EW map mass message type linked to your distribution model. Check out your distribution models if you guys have got access to your projects. 
you will find that ZEW map bus is there. So that is the reason behind that. So within that message type, the structure will be different, which will contain the Z fields, which will be flowing into EWM. Okay, so now another important thing is what we need to ensure is the active uh, the application logs are activated so that we can understand uh, what is the reason if the cartonization has passed or what is the reason the cartonization has failed. So all these things we can check out from the application log itself. Okay. So for that, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have maintained it for our application for cap, which is the one which we need to do. Otherwise, the application log will not show up and we'll not understand. So we will have to then debug and understand why it is not working. Say, for example, okay. So we go inside application log. So we go into this particular transaction ACT log. So you can see for these sub objects, the log is already activated. Okay, so what we need to do is just we need to add it for another object. So we will just go and put the sub object as cap. These are standard objects. So cap is done. So this is the cartonization planning. So this is for, that means the log can be viewed if you're maintaining a particular user ID over here. So only that particular user ID can be, uh, can monitor the logs, can view the logs. If you have not maintained it, then it will not show you the, I mean, you cannot view the logs, okay? So now let us try to see what exactly is our cartonization planning result. We have done all the configuration, we have done all the setup. Let us see whether it will work or not. If, in case it fails for any XYZ reason, so I will set it up for you guys, don't worry. And we will see it in tomorrow's session. We'll just continue with our session today so that we are able to cover more topics, okay? So now let us first start by creating a sales order. So I'll just go into the A01. So before I save the order, I'll just go and delete two parameters which I had set. So I will delete this and delete this. So now this is the product for which we have maintained our warehouse process type determination indicator ZC and also the storage control indicator. So let's see what happens. So test cart, we can use this. Save the order. Go to the A02. Change the requested delivery data, otherwise it will fail. Save it. Okay, so our delivery has got generated, ending with 209. So we go to EWM now, SCWM PRDO. So our delivery has come in, good news, and we can start working on this now. Okay, so what we'll do is we will go into warehouse task. So the process step which has got determined is Y214, which is good. This is the one which we wanted the system to determine as well. And then let's see if it is showing any stock that can be removed. It is showing from the storage type Y021, which is also correct because we wanted the system to create the warehouse task used from the storage type Y021 because we have used the stock removal strategy which has Y021 as it as the storage type within the first sequence itself. So if we click on create plus save, let's see what happens. Warning messages are issued, so I will not save it. So what it is going to tell me, 
Okay, so it is saying that it is assigned to a wave. So which is good. We will also get to see our wave thing. So let's see what happens. I will just move out of this. I will not save this. No. So now in order to process this delivery, what I will do, I will just simply go to the EW monitor. But that was just a warning message, by the way, guys. We can still ignore that message and we can go ahead as well. The system will not stop us from doing that. Okay. So this is already. So this, let me just see the wave assignment for this. Okay. So this is the one. So what I will do, release the wave and see if it is release. OK, so what has happened is because if you guys remember, we had done the configuration for the two step picking. So the system, what it did was based on that particular template, because we have maintained the uh, the customer as well and the route. So the system has generated a wave and based on that two step picking, it has created two warehouse tasks. OK, so if we now if we go back to the outbound delivery order, item and if we generate this so based on this it has created two warehouse tasks so this is the first one so once this is uh, completed it will create the second one okay so the first thing is that the storage process which has been determined by the system is y 2 which is not the storage process that we want the system to determine right so we want the system to determine which one we want the system to determine the uh, we want to just, we want the system to determine the warehouse task for the storage process ZCAI, right? So this is not correct. So we will just what we will do is we'll delete this. So I will just go to more options. Cancel WT. Okay. And now what I will do is I will try to check whether this wave we can generate or uh, using the wave because if you see this yes and now now if i go again back into wave for this outbound delivery order item so there is another wave which is got generated for this so what we can do is we can try to do the uh, cartonization planning for the wave itself. Okay. So the wave number is this, which is 4000150. We can try to see whether it works for our cartonization planning or not. There are two delivery items for which the process profile does not exist. Okay. So error while reading the cap process profile for warehouse number 1710. So if you remember, guys, we had defined our process profile. So it is saying that for this particular item, the process profile is not being able to determine. So let us check quickly check the configuration for that and why the system is not able to determine it. As I said, I'll not be spending too much time in trying to resolve this. If we will check if we can still generate it, and if we are not able to generate it, then I will create the data for you guys and tomorrow in the morning first itself we will be going through this demonstration okay but we will continue with the other topics so we go back into the cartonization planning configuration and over here determine process profiles for cartonization planning so the warehouse process type is y214 activity area is y021 process profile is c-a-r-t so what is wrong? So we have already defined this. So we have activated cartonization planning for waves. Now, if I just want to do one more thing, let me see.
So the delivery number is 4411, right? 4411. But this is just opening up the work center for me where I can create the land shipping handling unit. No worries, guys. We have done our configuration, but there is issue from the master data perspective that I need to uh, create and reset. I will show you guys what exactly was the reason why the system was not able to determine the uh, the process profile correctly. And then we will. I will also show you a demonstration for this for the cartonization planning part. But these are the steps. We have not missed any configuration steps. Uh, that is rest assured and also in terms of the master data this is the master data maintenance but there is something from a material perspective also that i'll check and if we can use some other strategies i will check that as well and then i will again re-trigger the cartonization planning part okay so this is the first thing that we are going to check tomorrow in the morning now since we were discussing about packaging specifications let us quickly go and check that configuration as well So we go into the packaging specification configuration. So, so for the packaging specification configuration, there are different things that we are setting up. First is the uh, the number range, the packaging specification parameters, and then you are also maintaining the structure and the determination of the packaging specification. So there are different layers of configurations that can be done within the packaging specification. Plus there are also business add-ins or bodies that are being provided from SAP side, which can be configured as per the requirements that you have from a packaging specification setup perspective. Okay, so the number range setup over here, if you see it is a generic number range. So what is what is the number range uh, basically work in? So whenever you are selecting the packaging specification group, when you're creating a packaging specification, let me show you, we go to back spec transaction. So this is a manual one by one creation of a packaging specification, but in general, uh, we will have a lot of packaging specifications in an organization and we will be using the packaging specification upload transaction slash SCWM slash IPU slash SCWM slash IPU. That is the transaction that we will use to upload the packaging specifications. Okay. Now, if I want to create a new packaging specification, say for example, so over here, I need to provide the packaging specification description. And then I need to select the group over here. So I'll select an existing group. So the moment I select automatically, this number is getting generated. So this number is getting generated based on the number range master that I have maintained, right? So if you see, the number range which has got determined over here is one ending with 10,114. So 10,114, so it is hitting this particular number range, okay? So I will just go back now. So from a configuration perspective, the ne next is the general packaging specification parameters. So over here, you would see the work step and the element group are being maintained to the form name so this is this particular form name that you see the scwm pack spec form name is something which is at a global level and this is not something that we will be changing every now and then okay so this particular form name that you see is the one which you're filling up when you are filling up the packaging specifications so basically it's the form layout okay so it's not something that we are going to change every now and then Next is the, so this is a one-time activity. In general, what I have seen, this is a one-time activity which we need to perform whenever we are setting up the system and the client. After that, you don't have to do it every time. Okay, even the number ranges are at a global level. It is not at a warehouse level. After that, you go inside packing specification group and over here, 
you can see, as I had told you, the number range is assigned, which is 0 to, and the level, which is set for SAP's default packaging specification group is valid data, okay? So if you see over here, the, uh, so this is the one where they have maintained the distribution is within where the packaging specification data that means is if it's going to be distributed is it going to remain within the source system is it going to go to a target system because we can also connect the packaging specification if we want to send it to any third party system for that we need to also define the rfc interface okay for any third party system obviously there will be a different logical system which will be defined with a different ip and we need to assign that particular address as a rfc destination between the ewm system and the third party system if we are sending the packaging specification information now in which which cases we will do that we will do that in cases if the ewm system is controlling the third party system interface as well and which example is that in if we are using ewm mfs to control the automated storage and retrieval system programmable logical controllers as well in that case that means through the ewm system i'm also controlling the robotic arms of the asrs system so in those kind of cases that means the entire information flow will happen from ewm and ewm is not the slave system in terms of cases where EWM is the slave system, then we will not be defining all these things and the packaging specification will remain with the EWM system only. Okay. So as I mentioned, the RFC connection setup for packaging specification distribution so over here, it's not required because there's no, no such setup that we have. But if you guys have those that kind of clients, it can be done as well over there. Okay. So this is the uh, the level set data that you see. This is something that is not required as of now. I will be covering the kitting topic and the value added services topic next week. And that is when we will be getting these level set uh, data information. Okay, so kitting and value added services is another sub subtopic <clears throat> which we have created. Uh, we have discussed a little bit about kitting. Similarly for value added services also, uh, there are different process oriented steps which are defined in the system. So although it sounds a bit different, but validated services is also nothing but where we are just adding an extra label an extra layer of packaging and all those kind of things which we are doing. So that for those kind of activities which you're performing separately in the warehouse, we'll be defining different steps and we would want the system to uh, make sure that it is uh, taking the operator directly for that particular work center where the evaluated services have been defined similarly for kitting as well so over here right now we have not explained to you i'm not explaining to you the entire procedure entire configuration for kitting and vas that's why i'm not going to cover it right now now when it comes to the structure of packaging specification this is where you define the level type element type level set work step type packaging material types assign packaging material to element type all these different levels of configuration are there so what are these level types and element types so if you see over here now if we go inside the packaging specification so this is just one level over here. So you've got the elements over here at the at the item level of the screen, and then you have the level details over here at the header level of the screen. So the, over here in this configurations, we will be now checking one by one what are the different details which are we are setting. So over here you see the level type which is main, which is this one that we see over here on our screen. So the level quantity is available for input. So one set to one, that means automatically the system is going to take one is to one uh, criteria. But over here, you can see for the level type, everything is open. Next is performing entity, whether it is a warehouse, whether it's a supplier, vendor, it's a different packager, because certain companies, what they do, they will not be doing the packaging part. I have seen those kind of scenarios as well, where the material is being sent to a 3PL warehouse for the packaging only. Again, it comes back. 
okay so in those kind of cases you will be maintaining the performing NPT as well in our case ours is a very simple warehouse so we don't have all those things if you want to buy default push in the HU type HU creation steps and all those things activated you can do it at this level itself okay so this is not active over here since this has not been maintained so therefore it comes like this with a blank field so we can select the HU creation over here but if I activate it over here say for example automatically it will be by default coming in like this and you cannot change it in that case okay so you can do that so so that every time the packaging specification even though it is uploaded you don't have to make sure you don't have to make sure that that particular field in the template is free okay so rounding relevance kitting all these things also you can activate from here quantity classification also you can maintain deletion allowed or not allowed that is also something which you can maintain from here okay and also the external step so the external step basically over here if you see really sorry so this is also related to your value added services okay which is for your uh if you see vs01 vs02 these are all for value added services and vs case is the one step which has been defined for kitting and reverse kitting okay so these are the steps that you can define. You cannot assign all steps, all process oriented steps over here. Okay. So once that is done, once you have defined the configured the level, the next is to define the element type. So the element type are the element type comprises of whether it's an auxiliary, auxiliary packaging material, that means an additional packaging material, or it's a main packaging material. What is the difference between an auxiliary packaging material? Now, say for example, a particular item before it is put inside a carton, it needs to be first wrapped in a thin layer of, uh, say, thermocol. Say for example, okay. So that is an auxiliary packaging material. It's not the main packaging material. So the main packaging material will still be the carton. So you have can you have the option of defining your element types as well. So over here, you've got your different level sets. Again, as I mentioned, level set is something that we will be using from the VAS and the kitting perspective generally. Okay. So from pallet data perspective, so you see the level which has been maintained is main. And within this, you have the element type pack. Okay. So there is no other separate levels that has been maintained. But if you are having different sub levels like say for example there you are packing first in a carton and then from a carton 10 cartons will be packed into one single pallet so that kind of level setup also you can do over here okay so over here is just one level right assign the level types you see there's just one level so you can assign multiple levels over here and then within those levels you can assign the element types so you see this packaging material types which are there so this one if you remember when we had when we were doing the configuration for the means of transport we had done this configuration mtr2 right so over here you see the means of transportation uh, category is maintained and similarly the other means of transport sorry the other packaging materials are also over here right from this yn01 pallet yn02 carton yn03 all these different packaging materials are also maintained over here so the packaging material types need to be maintained otherwise it will not display when you are maintaining your packaging specification okay. so the packaging specification when you are maintaining the packaging material under the main level so over here you need to you can see the element over here packaging material and then you need to push in the packaging material the exact packaging material so from here you can also assign a packaging material type to the element so over here say for example you see for the element type pack you have packaging material yn01 yn02 and yn03 and also triple zero one and triple zero two so these are the different packaging material types which have been linked to this element type level element type pack so you can also if as and when you are having new packaging material types and you want to assign it to your different element types you can do that as well okay so you see over here this uh this particular one is just got the one particular level 
So if you want to add one level over here, so you can see right now within the assigned elements, you have got all these options, right? So you can just click on adding the new material. Once you have maintained the main level, and then you can start adding the new material over here. So you can have added, I have just added a new level over here, see, okay? And within this element group, I can create a new element group and start maintaining. So as I said, if you want to maintain for different levels of packaging, that means first a carton and then many cartons equals to one pallet, you can do it like this. You can maintain the different levels, okay? So it will become like a nested issue at the end of the day. So the work step type, uh, assignment to packaging material type is the last one. So only one work step type has been defined, which is your standard SAP default work step type, which is assigned to the different packaging material types over here. Okay. If you want to, if you have defined your own work step type, then you can assign it to your different packaging material types as well. Now the determination of packaging specification, this is something where we are using this, where we are defining this condition type over here which we maintain at the over here at the top level of the packaging specification so this condition type is basically following the same condition technique which is there in sap and you need to maintain the same thing so it's same thing like the wave determination as well so you've got this field catalog over here the standard field catalogs from which you can select and create your own condition tables so the condition table, say for example, let's see what are the condition tables over here. <clears throat> so we've got, say for example, this one. So it has got supply chain unit, the packaging profile, packing profile, sorry, and then the route name. So these are the three fields which are there for this particular table. So you can create your own table and you can also create your own condition type and assign it accordingly, okay? So now, say for example, for zero cap, we had done that assignment as well. So there's just was one particular table and within this table, you've got the back underscore lock ID is your supply chain unit. And this is the packaging material. Okay, sorry, this is the the, uh, the cartonization planning profile, which we needs to be maintained over here. Okay, so this is the supply chain unit and this is the cartonization planning profile. So algorithm basically and then we go back define condition types so within this you can see you've got zero cap so zero cap is where we have used for the uh, cartonization planning so i'll just maintain this it has not been maintained cartonization So once you have this condition type maintained, the determination procedure also needs to be assigned. It's the same as I said, it's a condition technique. So within this procedure, if you go inside, you will see the condition type zero CAP, okay? So like this for the different conditions for OIBD, now this is the condition type which is being used for inbound delivery. So whenever you want your uh, packaging specification, to be triggered automatically at the time of inbound delivery, the system will create a handling unit automatically based on the condition type that we have maintained for a particular product. Okay, so create condition maintenance group. So this is the generic one. So, so this is not only for the packaging specification, but this condition maintenance group is for everything. So you have to just go inside the packaging specification condition maintenance group and say for example if you this is the one so this is where you are maintaining the application and the condition based on which you are maintaining the, uh, based on which you are creating the condition records so these condition records in turn are creating your packaging specification in the back end through a ppf action somehow whenever you are maintaining the condition records i would always recommend you guys to make sure that whenever you are setting it up and i've seen this in multiple systems across different projects that when you are uh, setting up the supply chain unit uh, the system if you are just copying and pasting it from a different uh, say for example transaction or a different feed 
uh, or di uh, different screen, it doesn't accept it. So you need, if you select it from here itself, only that is when it understands that yes, although nothing is different in terms of the, the naming convention or anything, but still somehow it just understands this. Okay, so make sure that you are uh, maintaining the supply chain unit using this F4 help and not just doing a copy and paste. Okay, I've seen this in multiple scenarios. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So it's better that you maintain it. Okay, so this is being maintained. And activate it. So always remember, once you create your packaging specification, you also need to make sure that the packaging specification is activated. Okay, so now let me just try to create. Okay, the inbound delivery is created. Let's go in the inbound delivery transaction. What happened? It did not get copied or worked. So no determination procedure for packaging specification or uh, UPB profile defined for document type, INB, okay. Finally, we have reached, uh, so we have reached open so many sessions. Um, delivery, different document types for inbound delivery process. So what was it? INB PDA, right? If I click on this. So this one I don't want to use right now. That's okay, because this is the package profile which I created for my cartonization planning. So this zero IBD should itself be more than enough. Let's see. So I just go out and do a hard refresh. Okay, and then go to back. Perfect. So you can see the system automatically generated the handling unit. If I clicked on this pack automatically icon over here. Okay. So what had happened was the delivery document type, which is being used for inbound deliveries. So if you see over here at the header level for inbound delivery, if I click on the form view, the document category is PDI, document type is INB. Okay. So when I was trying to, I had maintained the packaging specification, but what the system was telling me that there is no determination procedure. So we have seen that when we are defining the packaging specifications, we are also defining the determination procedure for the packaging specification. So we have just seen that if we go inside packaging specification configuration, scroll down, 
and you go to determination of packaging specification. Over here, this determination procedure, which is maintained, which is the zero IBD. So the zero IBD has got the condition type zero IBD maintained. What we did was the zero IBD condition type was maintained against the packaging specification because my expectation was that, that it should be there when the doc, uh, against the standard document type, but it was not there. So therefore, when we have created, when we are clicking on that button and this, when the delivery landed, it did not create the handling unit automatically. Now, I will again create another new delivery just very quickly so that you will understand that from next time onwards, the system will automatically create a handling unit for this particular material. Okay, so I will just select the same material again. Check post material has been, sorry, the delivery has been created. And we go inside over here. I'll use the same, it's ending with 62. Now, if we go inside over here and click on handling unit, you can see automatically the system has created a handling unit based on the packaging specification condition type that we have maintained for this particular product.